It seems like we are moving away from the old days of owning the software you pay for to an age where you are renting a software for perpetuity. This is one of the reasons why some digital artists claim they have taken the path of piracy when it comes to creative software of Adobe and Autodesk products, for example. But this is not even the reason why most people use pirated software. Some claim it works better pirated, and it gives them a lot of options and freedom from some annoying processes that you have to go through if you are a paying customer. But is it true? And what are the true reasons that push a good portion of creative people to the path of piracy? Believe it or not, some people are going in the direction of pirated software just because they are tired of the problems that come with the formalities of getting the software legally. For one, let's say a pirated version of 3ds Max will certainly bypass the need for creating an account or providing personal information to Autodesk. I'm sure if given a chance, most people would skip this part. However, it is typically a requirement when subscribing to legitimate software. So users are not forced to navigate through multiple screens of data entry, which can be particularly annoying if you are only interested in accessing the 3D software, but who isn't? Another interesting thing is that subscription models involve recurring payments and require you to keep the payment information up to date. But this is not the only problem. The problem is that it can add another layer of complexity and time consumption to the process as you must monitor your subscriptions and possibly deal with payment failures or renewals. On the other hand, pirated software, by its very nature, skirts around these financial transactions, allowing users to start using the software without any payment-related delays. And here is what's more interesting when it comes to obstacles, difficulties, and lack of freedom. Legitimate software sometimes enforce the use of specific digital rights management systems, which is also called as DRM, which can include online check-ins or other forms of verification that can be slow or intrusive. I guess most people hate it, especially if it becomes too much noticeable. However, pirated software has these DRM systems removed or circumvented, meaning that a user can start the software without waiting for these checks to complete. This is refreshing, right? Just kidding. There is also the factor of updates and upgrades. Legitimate software often pushes updates that can be mandatory and time-consuming. At least at a certain point you have to update. But pirated versions often offer a static version of the software without these updates, allowing artists and creatives to have a stable and smooth user experience. But of course this comes with a lot of downsides, such as the possibility of being hacked, viruses, and many, many, many other things that we're gonna talk about possibly in another video. Now, let me take a moment and tell you about CG Circuit. CG Circuit is a massive online platform for artists and creators just like you. It has everything a 3D or a VFX artist can need, such as different elements, smokes, bullet holes, and all kinds of assets, models, and much more. But did you know that CG Circuit is also an awesome platform for creators specifically? If you want to share your work and knowledge and make money, then CG Circuit Asset Store is the place to be. It allows you to publish any CG content and offers an amazing storefront with up to 96% revenue share. Not only that, their video player and account manager are jam-packed with features that would surely make time spent on the platform extremely enjoyable for users and creators alike. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description and start using CG Circuit for free today. One of the worst things about doing things the right way is that you have to pay even if you are using old versions. This may frustrate some people and push them to get a version illegally. Many users of creative software or digital art software probably including you and I, have become comfortable with a certain iteration of software and we may not feel the need to upgrade to the latest version, especially considering the fact that we have add-ons in addition to plugins and some tools for that specific version of a software, in addition to other customizations that allow us to work in the most optimal way. This comfort level translates into proficiency and efficiency in creating artistic projects and an upgrade 
may threaten the stability, let alone the fact that subscriptions require ongoing payments, which can add up to a substantial amount over time, in addition to some increase in pricing that happens from time to time. In the case of Autodesk products, the price of a yearly subscription increases by 5% each year. For the longest time, perpetual licenses were the only option, and now with subscriptions, it doesn't make a lot of sense to those who are used to pay for the new version of the software every few years when they really believe they have to upgrade to the next version. So users of old software versions who have perhaps already paid for perpetual licenses may find it financially burdensome to commit to regular payments, especially if they receive no added value from the new version. As a 3D artist said about this, I don't like saying so, but Autodesk pushed to the subscription model has made piracy a very appealing alternative for casual artists. I have downloaded the 30-day trial every year when new versions come out, but no one feature kills my apathy to paying a year or a three-year subscription to the software considering I fired it up every two to three months nowadays. Long term, you should consider what you are using the software for and how often before making the leap. In addition to this, the subscription model also implies a loss of ownership, and with perpetual licenses, users have the assurance that they could use their version of the software indefinitely. Subscriptions, on the other hand, can evoke a feeling of renting without the benefits of ownership, such as the ability to use the software without ongoing costs. That's why software development companies like Autodesk and Adobe are making billions each year. Also, if you haven't noticed, it seems that people who pirate 3D software and creative software in general often do so without remorse or regret, especially in the case of large companies like Adobe or Autodesk, for a few reasons. The cost of Adobe and Autodesk products is typically high, and these companies have moved to subscription-based models as we have seen, which require ongoing payments to use the software. For those who can't afford these fees, it's obvious that piracy is the only way to gain access to these tools for education or professional use, which is ironically the most convenient if you ask me. As someone said, remember, pirating Adobe software is always morally right. And another added, pirating Adobe software is not only morally acceptable, it's your moral obligation, which is funny. What I think makes it easier to pirate 2D and 3D in addition to other creative software is the fact that there is also a sentiment among creative people or creatives or digital artists that these corporations are faceless entities amassing significant profit and thus they won't be materially affected by individual acts of piracy. Some of you watching this video might share this perspective, I'm not gonna lie. If you think about it, this makes it much more easier. Because if you think of someone or something as an enemy, you can't feel remorse towards it. This coupled with the belief that if the software were more affordably priced, individuals will be more inclined to purchase it legitimately. This is reasonable and true to a certain extent, but we can't control how companies price their software. Some also might feel like it is unfair due to the monopolistic positions of these companies in certain industries, like game development, VFX, design, and so on. For instance, Adobe's creative suite is seen as a standard in many creative fields, which some interpret as leaving little room for competition, which is true. Similarly, Autodesk AutoCAD, for example, has a stronghold in architecture and engineering, Maya and Max in game development and VFX as well. Because of this, some individuals feel justified in pirating the software believing that these companies have an unfair advantage and they can limit consumer choice. If you think about it, what makes the act of pirating creative software or digital products in general, I mean what makes it easy, is the fact that the act of piracy doesn't carry the same tangible sense of theft as stealing a physical item might. The perception that copying is stealing can diminish the sense of guilt, as people who got software illegally often don't see a direct victim of their actions since a digital copy doesn't remove the original. That's why companies that sell software make a lot of money, because they can multiply it infinitely, they just have to make it once though. There's also some other reasons, 
Some might justify their actions by claiming that they will use the software just for learning purposes, intending to purchase a legitimate license once they can afford it or start profiting from their work. But to be honest, who does this at least are planning to pay, just not now. One of the most important reasons why 3D artists might want to pirate 3D software or creative software in general is partially due to the fact that 3D software are extremely expensive for some users, especially outside the first world countries. Basically for a company or a studio, paying a subscription of Max, Maya or any other 3D software can suffer a lot financially because a license of an Autodesk 3D software can represent a yearly salary of a worker or an employee. So obviously these companies far away from the hands of Autodesk or Adobe can get away with it without being audited. So for them, it may be the most logical option. Even with the introduction of indie licenses, which is about give or take $300 per year, this can be expensive for some people over there. If we take countries in Southern Asia or Southeast Asia, studies show that India has 91% of personal computers are loaded with pirated software, followed by Indonesia with about 90% and Taiwan with 73%, in addition to Singapore with 55% and the Philippines with 43%, which is a lot. But the reality is, this is the norm over there. And if you look around, you'll notice that the correlation between piracy and poverty goes hand in hand. So the more advanced the country is, we have less piracy, and the poorer it is, the more piracy companies will experience. Because it is easier for them, I mean way easier, to get software illegally compared to purchasing it. So, I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, let's give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.